Let's make this easy. The strain energy density, strain energy density. All right, let me read this off. As a body deforms due to external loads, it stores energy. It's almost like the potential energy in a spring, right? When you push or pull a spring, you, it stores energy. Materials do that too, a little bit differently. They get stored in strain energy, all right? And so that's the energy needed to strain, to stretch a material. The strain energy is the energy needed to stretch a material. The strain energy density is the energy needed to stretch a material per unit volume, right? Divided by unit volume. But here we go. Strain energy density is the area under the stress strain curve. Under the normal, the normal, not the shear, the normal stress strain curve. So whatever the curve is, whatever the curve is, we could find the area under it, and that would be the strain energy. But is it the area under the whole curve? Is it the area under a certain portion of the curve? Well, it's just the area under the curve to where you have stretched it. Yeah, where you've loaded it, exactly. So if you load it up to here, then you would find that would be the strain energy density required to load it right there. You know, if you load it up to here, uh, you might want to kind of break this up into a couple of different shapes. That would be the strain energy density needed to load it up to there. All right, there's two special strain energy densities. You could probably guess it, and you can look on the next page. But the strain energy density of the elastic region is important, and the strain energy density of the whole uh, graph until fracture is important. That's on the next page. So we'll jump on the strain energy density is the area under the curve all right the strain energy density of the elastic region is the modulus of resilience so the strain energy density of the elastic region you all know your uh, abbreviations hopefully do you see why this might be a good measure of resilience it's kind of how much energy can it take and bounce back you know resilient if you're resilient you can bounce back from things without any permanent deformation so the area under the curve is the modulus the measure of resilience okay the area of the whole curve strain energy density is the modulus of toughness Strain energy density of the whole stress strain curve. And it's a measure of toughness. Because, you know, some curves might have really high stresses it can take, but if it has a, a short, if it fractures very short, you know, maybe that's not as tough as something that can, maybe it doesn't take as high of a stress, but it really stretches, it takes that energy. So the strain energy density is a good measure of toughness. So modulus of toughness is the area under the whole curve. Modulus of resilience is the area under the um, elastic region. And so you can compare them, you can compare their moduluses. Uh, you can compare lots of different values. And I probably will and have in the past given you like a chart, say there's three different materials right there. There's three different materials. Which one has the larger um, yield stress? There's the yield point right here. There's the yield point right here. Which one has the larger yield point? This one, you know, material A, let's call it, B, C. Which one is more ductile? Which one is more ductile? Which one stretches the most before fracture? C. Which one has the larger modulus of 
toughness. You might have to guesstimate on that one, but I think that B would have the largest area under the curve. So maybe B is the toughest material. Okay, which one has the largest ultimate strength? So there's ultimate strength, there's ultimate, there's an ultimate. A has the largest ultimate. Which one has the largest modulus of elasticity? Those actually look to be the same modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus or E. Okay, so you see how you can compare different materials, you know, which one has larger of, of these values.